Hey there everyone, this is Dan from the Strength Coach Tutor. Thanks for checking out today's video. Today we're going to discuss uh, the nutrition questions that we went through the past two weeks. We have 10 nutrition questions to discuss. So let's go ahead and get started. Our first question is, which food has the lowest glycemic load? Is it the plain bagel, chocolate milk, or brown rice? So the one with the lowest glycemic load is actually going to be the chocolate milk. So despite the chocolate milk probably being higher in sugar, the chocolate milk is going to have a lot of protein and it's gonna have a little bit of fat in it as well. And when you have carbohydrates in the presence of other macronutrients, it's going to bring down its glycemic index or its glycemic load, right? The plain bagel is gonna be comprised of primarily simple sugars and very heavy in carbs, little presence of fiber, any polysaccharides. That's gonna be relatively higher in the glycemic load and same with brown rice. Yes, brown rice is gonna have a little bit more fiber to it, but still primarily just carbohydrates, right? So that's gonna have a higher glycemic load as well. On to question number two. An athlete wants to gain eight pounds in the off season. They increase their daily caloric intake by 500 kcals. Assuming all weight gain is lean body mass, how many weeks does it take to gain the eight pounds? Does it take six weeks, eight weeks, or 10 weeks. So let's check out over here to see how we do the math for this type of question. Question number three. Which of the following foods has the highest concentration of saturated fats? Avocado oil, olive oil, or coconut oil? So when in doubt, if you're stuck in terms of trying to figure out which food is higher in saturated fats, think about which fat is solid at room temperature. So out of these three choices, avocado, olive, or coconut oil, coconut oil is gonna be the one that's solid at room temperature. Therefore, coconut is gonna have the higher concentration of saturated fats. Question number four, which food is considered an incomplete protein? So an incomplete protein is going to be when uh, it does not have a complete amino acid profile. And stereotypically, these are going to be our plant-based proteins. So looking at our answer choices, we have fat-free milk, peanut butter, or egg whites. To me, choice B, peanut butter, right? That's a plant-based protein. That's going to have an incomplete uh, amino acid profile. So therefore, it's going to be an incomplete protein. Question number five, which pre-competition meal is most appropriate for a marathon runner? So choice A says a PB&J, banana, 16 ounces of water, one hour before competition. Choice B says steak, potatoes, asparagus, eight ounces of water, two hours prior. Choice C, one cup of brown rice, one uh, potato, 64 ounces of water, and four hours prior to competition. This is a tricky one and a lot of people want to pick choice C here. However, choice A is going to be the best bet as choice A does have a nice combination of primarily carbs but also a little protein thrown in there as well. Uh, the problem with choice C, yes, it is very heavy, heavy in carbs, which we love to see for our marathon runners, but we do want that little bit of protein, right? We definitely want that little bit of protein. Um, and so that, that's why choice A is definitely a good answer to go with. Um, and I think it's a nice meal, not too big, not too small, uh, one hour prior to competition. Next question. So the ideal carbohydrate concentration in a sports drink is what? Is it four to six percent, six to eight percent or eight to ten percent? So this is where some confusion occurs, right? The, the acceptable range, if you will, for a carbohydrate concentration in a sports drink is five to 10%. However, the ideal concentration is going to be six to 8%. The reason being is that this allows for efficient gastric emptying, meaning it allows your body to still digest, digest these carbohydrates relatively quickly and efficiently without weighing you down and kind of uh, weighing down your stomach a little bit as well. All right, and, and it gives your body faster access to this fuel. All right, next question. So which food has the highest concentration of fiber per serving? Is it avocado, white rice, or chicken? So despite white rice being a carbohydrate, it doesn't have a whole lot of fiber, 
right? However, avocado does have a lot of fiber. Yes, it is known for being uh, a good source of healthy fats, but avocado also has a very nice amount of fiber in it as well. And then of course, chicken, going to be primarily protein, not going to get any fiber from that source. Next question, which food has more fiber per serving? Is it spinach, broccoli, or is it equal? They actually have equal amounts of fiber, spinach and broccoli. So they, this would be choice C here. Uh, spinach and broccoli having equal amounts of fiber. Next question, compared to glycemic index, glycemic load differs in that it takes into account what? Choice A says serving size. Choice B says type of carbohydrates, so meaning mono, di, or polysaccharide. Or choice C, the impact of food has on blood glucose levels. Correct answer choice here is going to be A, serving size. So if we were to look at glycemic index, it doesn't matter what food you're eating. Um, it would just, it gives you a number in terms of this is the effect that food is going to have on your blood glucose. You could have one serving of it, you could have 10, doesn't matter. Glycemic load, though, does take into account serving size. So glycemic load would say per serving of this food or whatever it may be, this is how much you could expect your blood glucose levels to rise, okay? Um, of course, looking at choice C here, both of them do that, right? The impact of food has on blood glucose levels, glycemic index, and glycemic load look at that, right? It's just the context in which it's looking at it. Um, and then the type of carbohydrate, that doesn't matter in terms of what... You know, glycemic index and glycemic load aren't necessarily measuring that. Um, however, though, typically, uh, foods that are higher in mono and disaccharides are going to have a higher glycemic index and higher glycemic load, whereas foods with uh, more polysaccharides and typically more fiber are going to have a lower glycemic index and lower glycemic load. Last question here. Which amino acid is known to be most effective for eliciting muscle protein synthesis post-workout? Is it A, valine, B, tyrosine, or C, leucine? Correct answer here is going to be C, leucine. Leucine is one of the three branched chain amino acids, the other two being valine and isoleucine. However, leucine has been uh, shown to be the most effective amino acid for muscle or stimulating muscle protein synthesis, especially post-training, okay? I hope you found that review of those 10 nutrition questions useful. To be honest, those are very straightforward, kind of bare bone questions. Those should be relatively simple and straightforward. If you're looking for more of a challenge, I highly encourage you to, to go to thestrengthcoachtutor.com and join our online classroom where we can give you a lot of uh, more in-depth and more intense nutrition questions and questions for the whole exam too to help better prepare you and give you the best resources possible. And hurry now because we don't have that much room left for our classes this fall. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys again soon.